Good morning and welcome back, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And welcome. Today is Thursday, July 27th, 2023. It is 9.01 a.m. Eastern. And it's good to be back with you all for Bible study this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. I pray everyone is having a wonderful day, morning, noon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, what are we doing today, Allison? Today's reading, we are now up to Mark chapter 12 in the Amplified Translation. And for those of you that were with me when we read the book of Matthew, um, some of these um, stories that we're going to read today are familiar. And in the Amplified, we have uh, quite a few footnotes that we'll go through today as well. But today, first of all, um, today's Thursday. It's Thankful Thursday. So we're going to pray and um, thank God for everything that he has ever done for us, right? That what he is doing right now, things that he's working out in our favor and um, everything that he is going to do. All right. So I'm not going to um, chit chat too long with you all this morning. Let me tell you how many verses we have. We have 44 verses to get through this morning. So we're going to pray and then we're going to get right into the reading of the word. I'm going to take you through the footnotes and we'll see what the Holy Spirit has to reveal to each and every one of us. All right. So good morning. All right. Good morning, everyone. Once again. And let me just get my my um, thankful Thursday prayer up before me. I, I'm going to stick with the let there be. We've done the let there be for the last few weeks, and I, I happen to love it. So we're going to stick with that this morning. All right. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord. I thank you for the gift of another day. I thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord, I thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives. I pray that you continue to keep your hand upon us, Father. Order our steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Let everything that we say, do, think, and become, let it be pleasing in your sight. Lord, I thank you for each and every person that is on here with me live. I thank you for each and every person that will watch the replay. I pray that you will bless us, bless our households, bless our bloodlines, maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest. Father, I pray that you will order our steps today, direct our paths, keep us from all accidents, seen and unseen, keep us from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Father, bless the works of our hands. Heal our bodies, Lord. I pray for a fresh download and an outpouring of wisdom, understanding. Help us to be kind today. Father, let us operate and conduct ourselves with the spirit of excellence. Lord, we thank you. Today is Thankful Thursday, Lord, and we ask, let there be a fresh anointing upon our lives. Let the angels of the Lord go before us, making easy and successful all of our days. Let there be breakthroughs and unexpected blessings in our days today. Let every crooked path be made straight and remain straight. Increase our level of creativity. Let there be divine alignment, divine connections, and divine compensation in our lives. Let there be a spirit of excellence in everything that we do. Let our eyesight, insight, and foresight increase and improve daily. Father, let our faith increase. Let our family members be saved. Let our lives be used for your glory. Father, I pray that you will show us your glory and that you will use our lives for your glory. Let our health be restored. Let our bodies be healed both emotionally and physically. Father, let increase be our portion. Let joy fill our days. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives. Let there be light. Father, show us everything that we need to know and be aware of. Let there be multiple streams of income and blessings released to us, O oh God. Let newness fill our lives. Father, bless us with new ideas, new strategies, new jobs. Let the right doors be open to us and all of the wrong doors be closed. Let opportunities be presented to us. Let peace fill our hearts, our homes, and our minds. Protect our families, our possessions, our water, our food, and our DNA. Let us make quantum progress in our purposes, our businesses, our finances. Let us recover all that has been stolen from us. Let us recover the years that the enemy has stolen. Father, re reveal the agenda of everyone coming into our lives. Expose the wrong and hidden motives in people and situation, in situations. Father, reveal solutions to our problems. Let us experience 
experience supernatural financial blessings, breakthroughs, success, and strategies. Let us be thankful for everything that you have done, everything that you were doing, and everything that you will do for us in the future. Let us understand and discern the times and seasons, our assignments, and our purpose for being alive. Let big victory be our portion in every area of our lives. Let our level of wisdom increase daily. Cause us to win and experience victory in every area of our lives. Father, even show us where to buy our food. Lord, let us have x-ray vision to see the hidden things that are meant to hinder and harm us so we will know how to pray, to pray against them and how to avoid them. Let our youth be restored and renewed like the eagle and let us have a fresh zeal for your word. Now, Father, as I prepare to read your word, Mark chapter 12 this morning, Lord, may you give us revelation, wisdom, and understanding of it. Minister to each and every person that will hear the reading of your word. Cause us all to glean something that we've never gotten from the scriptures before. And Lord, I just ask that you bless the children, keep them safe. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to start out with the parable of the vineyard owner. All right. Okay. Jesus began to speak to them, the chief priests, scribes, and elders who were questioning him in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a wall around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and he rented it out to tenant farmers and left the country. When the harvest season came, he sent a servant to the tenants in order to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. They took him and beat him and sent him away empty handed. Again, he sent them another servant and they threw stones and wounded him in the head and treated him disgracefully. And he sent another, and that one they killed, then many others, some they beat, some they killed. He still had one man left to send, his beloved son. He sent him last of all to them, saying, they will respect my son. But those tenants said to each other, this man is the heir. Come, let us kill him and destroy the evidence, as his inheritance will be ours. So they took him and killed him and threw his body outside the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and will give the vineyard to others. Have you not even read this scripture? The stone which the builders regarded as unworthy and rejected, this very stone has become the chief cornerstone. This came from this came about from the Lord and it is marvelous and wonderful in our eyes. And they were looking for a way to seize him, but they were afraid of the crowd for they knew that he spoke this parable in, re in reference and to, um, re in reference to and as a charge against them. And so they left him and went away. Next section, Jesus answers the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes, starting at verse 13. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus in order to trap him into making a statement that they could use against him. They came and said to him, teacher, we know that you are truthful and have no personal bias toward anyone for you are not influenced by outward appearances or social status, but in truth, you teach the way of God. Is it lawful according to Jewish law and tradition to pay the poll tax to Tiberius Caesar or not? Should we pay the tax or should we not pay? But knowing their hypocrisy, he asked them, why are you testing me? Bring me a coin, a denarius, to look at. So they brought one. Then he asked them, whose image and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, pay to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And they were greatly amazed at him. Verse 18. Some Sadducees who say that there is no resurrection came to him and began questioning him, questioning him saying, teacher, Moses, Wrote, I'm sorry, teacher, Moses wrote for us a law that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but leaves no child, his brother is to marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. There were seven brothers and the first one took a wife, died, leaving no children. The second brother married her and died, leaving no children. And the third likewise. And so all seven married her and died and left no children. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, whose wife will she be? For all seven brothers were married to her. 
Jesus said to them, is this not... Is this not why you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures that teach the resurrection nor the power of God who is able to raise the dead. For when they rise from the dead, they do not marry, nor are they given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. But concerning the raising of the dead, have you not read in the book of Moses in the passage about the burning bush, how God spoke to him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, <clears throat> excuse me, but of the living. You are greatly mistaken and you are deceiving yourselves. Then one of the scribes, an ex expert in Mosaic law, came up and listened to them, arguing with one another and noticing that Jesus answered them well and asked him, which commandment is first and most of all important? Jesus answered, the first and most important one is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul or life and with all your mind, your thought and your understanding and with all your strength. This is the second. You shall unselfishly love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, admirably answered, teacher, you truthfully stated that he is one and there is no one but him and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to unselfishly love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Verse 34. When Jesus saw that he answered thoughtfully and intelligently, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one would dare to ask him any more questions. Jesus began to say, as he taught in the portico or court of the temple, how can the scribes say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself said, when inspired by the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the father said to my Lord, the son, the Messiah, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him the son, the Messiah Lord. So how can it be that he is David's son? The large crowd enjoyed hearing Jesus and listened to him with delight. In the course of his teaching, he was saying, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes displaying their prominence and like to receive respectful greetings in the marketplaces. And they love the chief seats in the synagogues and the places of distinction and honor at banquets. These scribes who devour or confiscate widows' houses and offer long prayers for appearances sake to impress others, these men will receive greater condemnation. That's verse 40. The widow's might. He sat down opposite the temple treasury and began watching how the people were putting money into the treasury. And many rich people were putting in large sums of money. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a mite. Calling his disciples to him, he said to them, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, this poor widow put in proportionally more than all the contributors to the treasury. For they all contributed from their surplus, but she from her poverty put in all she had, all she had to live on. Amen and amen. And that concludes Mark chapter 12 in the Amplified Translation. Good morning, cousin. All right, so let's take a look at the um, footnotes here. All right, so the first footnote is for verse number one, which reads, Jesus began to speak to them, the chief priests, the scribes and elders who were questioning him in parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a wall around it. So the footnote here is referencing the wall. And it says, it was commonplace to pile up loose rocks to serve as a low wall around one's property. Second footnote is for verse two. When the harvest season came, he sent a servant to the tenants. The footnote is for the servant. And it says here, the servants represent the prophets sent to Israel by God. Next footnote 13 says here. 
This is the section under Jesus answers the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Then they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus in order to trap him into making a statement they could use against him. So the footnote here is for the Pharisees. And it says, this was an unlikely alliance since the Pharisees were a strict religious sect while the Herodians were not religious and supported the rule of Caesar. Verse 14, they came and said to him, teacher, we know that you are truthful and have no personal bias toward anyone for you are not influenced by outward appearances or social status. I love that, right? But in truth, you teach the way of God. Is it lawful according to the Jewish law and tradition to pay the poll tax to Caesar or not? All right. So the footnote here is regarding the poll tax. And it says every Jew was required to pay the poll tax. It was considered a sign of subservience to Rome. Next footnote is 15. Should we pay the tax or should we not pay? Okay, so the footnote here is requiring, um, referring to, it says, bring me a coin, a denarius. And the footnote tells us that a denarius is a day's wages for labor. So it's your whole day's worth of pay. Okay, 19. Teacher, Moses wrote for us a law that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but leaves no child, his brother is to marry the widow and raise up children for her. So the footnote here is referencing Mary. And it says, the purpose of this was to carry on the family line and keep property within the family. How many knew that? I did know that. We probably spoke about that also when we read um, Matthew. 31. This is the second. These are the, um, they as to what was most important, which commandment was most important of all. 31. This is the second. You shall unselfishly love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the footnote here says, the key to understanding this and other statements about love is to know that this love, the Greek word agape, is not so much a matter of emotion as it is doing things for the benefit of another person. That is having an unselfish concern for another and a willingness to seek the best for another. Now, just imagine what life would be like if people really conducted them them you know conducted themselves this way today instead of always looking for something in return or only doing something for somebody because you think that they can do something for you if we really just had a genuine desire to bless somebody else to help somebody else to meet the need of somebody else if we see somebody struggling and we have surplus right we have extra that we can give and we're not going to miss it right how how um awesome would life be you know, you hold the door, even things like you just hold the door for people, right? I had to go to the doctors this week and um, there were older people coming in with canes and walkers and things like that. It took me nothing to sit there and hold the door and let them enter and exit. Nothing at all, right? Just a random act of kindness, just to genuinely be concerned about somebody else and to make sure they were able to enter and exit easily, right? Right? The world would be a different place if people thought like that. All right, 35. It says, Jesus began to say, as he taught in a portico or court of the temple, how can the scribe say that the Christ is the son of David? So the footnote here is on, on how can. And it says... It is no co coincidence that Jesus raises this question after his preceding discussion with the lawyer, a scribe. Matthew 22 in 2235 notes that the lawyer had questioned Jesus to test him. His goal was to extract from Jesus the admission that there is only one God and eventually to use that admission against him when he claimed to be the son of God and therefore God himself. In reality, Jesus admitted nothing that posed a problem for the concept of one God existing as three distinct persons. He drew attention to this fact by raising the issue of David's relationship with the Messiah. Verse 39 reads, 
Okay, so let me back up to 38 so we can pick up the context here. In the course of his teaching, he was saying, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, displaying their prominence and like to receive respectful greetings in marketplaces. Here we go, verse 39. And they love the chief seats in the synagogues and places of distinction and honor at banquets. The footnote here says, these seats were located near the scrolls of the law facing the congregation in the synagogue. So you could be seen, right? Everybody's looking at you. It's kind of like having seats up on the altar now in our day, right? Where the whole congregation is facing you. So you see everybody who might be seated up there. All right, 41 reads and he sat down opposite this is regarding the widow's might and he sat down opposite the temple treasury and began watching how the people were putting money into the treasury all right so there's two footnotes here for the for this verse for the first one is regarding the treasury and it says 13 trumpet shaped chests were placed around the wall in the court of women in the temple the second footnote and many rich people were putting in large sums of money. So the footnote here is represent, um, referencing the large sums of money. It says 13 recept receptacles for the money were metal and the heavy silver coins contributed by the wealthy would have made quite a noise when they were deposited, causing, calling, I'm sorry, calling audible attention to the size of each contribution. By contrast, the widow's coins would have barely, barely made a sound. Okay, and the last footnote for us is 42. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which amount to a mite, right? So we always refer to that as the widow's mite. It says the least valuable Roman coin, which amounted to only 1 64th of a day's wages for a laborer, traditionally called the widow's mite, right? So this is 1 64th of a day's wages as opposed to the denarius, which was a whole day's labor, right? Okay, so that takes us through all of the footnotes for today. So what are my thoughts about this? Um, what did I write down here? 14. The section here where it starts at verse 13, Jesus answers the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Again, my thought as I was reading this, this is just about how we see in today's, in some of today's churches, right? Uh, it says, they came and said to him, teacher, uh, we know you are truthful and have no personal bias toward anyone. You're not influenced by outward appearances or social status. All right, so number one, I'm going to say that's again a reminder to us that God does not, he's not impressed by your clothing. He's not in, impressed by your $500 dress. He's not impressed by your social status, right? He's looking at our hearts. It says, but in truth, you teach the way of God. Um, so that's what I thought about that. And, um, oh, okay. So down here where it was talking about the scribes and the Pharisees. 38. In the course, his teaching was saying, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, displaying their prominence and like to receive respectful greetings in marketplaces. This is all for show, right? And they love the chief seats in the synagogues and the places of distinction and honor at banquets full of self. I'm hearing full of self, pride, arrogance. Look at me, look at me, right? These scribes who devour or confiscate widows' houses and offer long prayers, Listen, and offer long prayers for appearances sake to impress others. So this is just like one big show, right? It's not really, there's nothing serious going on here. It says these men will receive greater condemnation. Now it says these scribes devour or confiscate widows' houses. So that, you know, it sounds to me like they're not even doing the right thing. But they want all of the acknowledgement. They want the honor. They want... You know, and we, I, I just feel like we see so much of that. We see so many people in, you know, mount the pulpit nowadays with the um, outfits that are very distracting and everything is a show from head to toe. It's so much, I've spoken about this many times, it becomes very distracting when they're all 
you know, glammed up and they have so much going on that you're sitting there trying to figure out what, what you're looking at, you know, and everything is, it's all about this look at me and I, I want to sound intelligent and I, I want to use these big words and I want to come across powerful. It says, so they offer long prayers for appearances sake to impress others, right? And so some people know how, they know how to pray. They can pray for an hour, right? But how are you living when you're done? You know, we can all sit down and, and write, you know, write a sermon or write a prayer and get up and rehearse it. So, you know, speaking about that, rehearsing prayers, I'm just going to tie this in because, you know, I always like to find a way to tie the scriptures into what we see going on in, in our current day, which is 2023, right? So this says they offer long prayers for appearances sake to impress others. And so I was watching this video. This video popped up of a testimony. I don't know what court it was. It was here in the U.S. There was some kind of, um, there wasn't a court case. Like, I don't know, what did they have going on in Washington, D.C.? But anyway, the person who was speaking was reading a speech. But there was a woman sitting behind her who, you know, everybody in the comments were trying to guess who this woman was because as the woman was reading the speech, she was she was reciting the speech. And it was very bizarre because she's sitting back there and at first she seemed kind of off because she's looking all around. She's like looking up, she's looking down, but her mouth is moving. And then you catch on that she's actually reciting the speech as the woman that has the microphone is reading it. And then... The woman misspeaks and she uses the wrong word and the girl gets up and taps her and she corrects her. She's like this and she corrects her and the woman corrects herself. But I said all of that to say this woman, I don't know whether this woman rehearses the speech with her or she was the speech writer. Everybody was trying to guess who this woman was, but it was very clear that, you know, I don't know. I'm not going to make any judgments of it. All I'm going to say is there's a lot going on, a lot going on, right? People are doing things. It's not authentic. It's not their work. And so, you know, unfortunately we see that in the pulpit. People get up, they have on these outfits that are very, I find them to be very distracting. There's bling going on all over the place. They can pray, they can use these big words. And then you find out that their lives are in shambles that they're sleeping with somebody in the church that's not their wife or not their husband. You know, I personally heard of this in churches that I've attended. You know, this one is calling this other woman at two o'clock in the morning and he's married. But you are leading prayer, right? So unfortunately, we have to be careful, but we have to be, be very honest um, that these things do go on in the church and we have to ask God for wisdom and discernment and, and who to follow and who not to follow because people are very good at pretenses and it's very easy. Like I said, it's very easy to sit down and conduct. I, I have a thousand prayers that I've written myself that I use for thankful Thursday and that I plan to put in a book, but they're prayers from my personal prayer time that I wrote things that I want right? Or just my conversations with God is my work. But it was clear with this court case that this woman who was sitting in the back was more familiar with the, the speech than the woman who was reciting it. It was clear that the woman who was re reading it didn't write the speech. So anyway, um, that, those are my thoughts about it. I just happen to love when you see the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees and all that. They just keep trying to trick Jesus and trick Jesus. And it just doesn't happen. And we go through that kind of foolishness in our lives, right? Day to day, people who want to set us up, they want your job, they want whatever you have, and they'll do anything to get it. But, you know, we press on, we continue to pray. And so um, those are my thoughts. This was Mark chapter 12, the Amplified Translation today. It was Thankful Thursday today. Um, and thank you all for joining me. I pray everyone has a wonderful day today. Grace and peace. I pray the blessings of the Lord um, be with us all. May he make his face shine upon us and be gracious unto us and give us his peace. All right. And 
For those of you who have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, I ask that you do. My name is Allison Vaughn. The channel is Allison Vaughn. And the links are in the bio and the profile on Instagram and Facebook, okay? If you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you'll see my profile picture. If you click on my profile picture, it'll bring up the subscribe button. I ask that you subscribe to my channel. Help me share the word of God with the world. We need to grow our family. People continue, listen. People continue to exit this earth each and every day. I don't know if you're following. The athletes are collapsing like crazy. Professional athletes, college athletes, student athletes are just collapsing after practice. Even a little girl who was like 14, a cheerleader, or even maybe younger than that. I read the other day, even this little girl collapsed, right? We have to ask for God for wisdom and discernment. What's going on? All of these people are exiting prematurely. There's blood clots all over the place. Strokes, cancers, aggressive cancers. I'm telling you, this is the time, like never before, to get into the word of God. Develop your prayer life. Develop your relationship with the Lord. We don't have time to play around because tomorrow is not promised, all right? And if you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you will see a video card, which I will link the next chapter of our reading. I try to make it very easy for you. Everything is organized in playlists on YouTube so that you can find the book of the Bible that you want to listen to. The chapters are there and um, it's easy, convenient, accessible. Have a look around, visit the channel. All right. So with that, once again, I'm going to say grace and peace, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I don't take it for granted. There are many, many people that are doing this, that are reading the word of God. So I thank you for your time and I will see you tomorrow, which will be Feel Good Friday and we will continue in the book of Mark. All right. Grace and peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. All right. I really do appreciate it. Bye.